Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, and today I have for you part 13 of our 2D side scroller tutorial. In this part, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an overlay on your screen that lets you hit buttons to move your character around, basically what you would see on a typical mobile application. So a lot of people in the comment section were requesting, how would I make this for mobile? How would I put these inputs for mobile? So we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. So I've only put one button in and I'm only going to show you how to do another like two or three buttons. You can go ahead and do the rest. These do take a bit of time and it would make the video exceedingly long if I wanted to go ahead and show you how to do every single button in this. But they're all exactly the same. So after I show you how to do these two different types of buttons, you'll be able to go ahead and make all of the ones you need. So anyway, the first one that I created is a very simple one that makes you move left. So uh, this is set to on pressed. So basically if anybody touches it or with their, uh, their keyboards or anything like that, it's going to move the player to the left like that. As you see, it moves the player to the left whenever I hit this button in the bottom left corner. So to go ahead and make that overlay that you saw right there, uh, you're going to go have to head into our widgets folder that we created in our project at the project startup. In that widgets folder, you're going to add a new uh, widget called buttons. So what you're going to do to create this new widget is right click, user interface, widget blueprint, and then you're going to call it buttons. Inside of the buttons designer, what you're going to do is you're going to have this whole screen here and you're going to have to outline where you want your buttons to be placed. So I'm putting mine in the bottom left corner for movement and the bottom right corner will be for uh, attacks and things like that. And then in the center will be the pause button and the start menu and all of those different sorts of buttons that people will use. So first I'm going to show you how to create a movement input button. So what you're going to do is type in button into the search bar over here in the palette search on the left, grab the button and place it wherever you want. We're going to make this one the button to move to the right. So size the buttons so that they're relatively the same. If you wanted to be precise, you actually get the exact uh, measurements over here on the right side. So you can go ahead and match those if you want, but uh, just for tutorial purposes, since I'm going to be removing this from after I continue with my tutorial series, um, I'm just going to make it sort of okay. So we've got our button right here, and what we need to do is we need to add two events. We need to add an on-pressed and an on-released. Uh, so first things first, though, you need to anchor this to the bottom left corner. So the bottom left corner, simply because this is where our buttons are going to be, we want them to be in the bottom left corner of the screen from whatever device we're playing. So bottom left corner, anchor the, uh, the button down there. So on pressed is down here on the bottom right, just above my webcam. Go ahead and click on pressed. When we get to this on pressed, what we're going to do is you can see I already have the code in here for the, uh, the left button moving. But um, we're going to have to have a custom event that gets called on our player blueprint. So compile and save this and head over to your 2D side scroller character blueprint. In the 2D side scroller character blueprint, we're going to have to have two custom events created. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two variables. So the first variable is going to be B move right. Um, that's a Boolean variable, defaults to false to start with. So B move right. So I lied, we only need one variable actually. So what we're going to do first is create a custom event. So type in custom event into the search bar right here. The custom event we want to create is we're going to want to call this move right. So I'm going to type in move right into the custom event here. Next thing we're going to need to do is another custom event. So type in another custom event and we're going to be stop moving right. So when we start moving right, and this is going to make a lot more sense when I get to it, but I'm uh, just going to follow along for now. So when we first start moving right, as you can see with this moving left code here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set the moving right variable to true. So move right variable is getting set to true. So set move right to true. So basically we're moving right. That's all we're saying right here. Nothing too complicated or crazy. Next thing we need to do is set up the B is moving variable. So this B is moving variable is the one that determines which way our character is facing when we do the animation. So if we're moving right, we want to set B is moving right to true. We are moving right, so we want to set that to true. The final thing we need to do is add movement input. This is just going to give us our initial start. So add movement input. The direction we want to move is in the positive x direction because we're moving to the right. Well, actually, that's right on your screen because webcam flips. But we're moving to the right, and uh, we want it to be in the right x direction, which is positive x. The scale value is going to be 1. That doesn't really matter. So this will only move us for like a millisecond. We're going to click the button, and it would move us for a millisecond. So that's not enough. Um, after we stop moving right, so basically when we release the button, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set move right to false, and B is move right. It doesn't really matter, actually. I didn't need to put that variable there, so that's fine. So make sure you compile and save, and what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the uh, update animation graph over here. As you can see, I already have the move left uh, code put in here as well, but basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a branch. So basically with this branch, we're going to see if we are moving right so type in move right and get your move right variable that we created so the move right variable with this move right variable well first drag your node whatever your least recent node is that's going down to your update animation uh, event down here make sure you drag that off of the false by holding down control and clicking and dragging it in 
and then drag the false off from the previous one down into this branch. These are going right before your update animations. These are going to be your last things that you do. So when we get here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to drag off and we're going to want to add movement input, the same exact thing we just created over here, add movement input. The direction is going to be in the positive x direction, the scale value is going to be 1, the movement input is for ourself. The final thing we need to do is we need to update animation flipbook, so update flipbook. Set flipbook, I said the wrong nose, we want to set the flipbook. The target is going to be the sprite. To get the sprite, uh, you can click over here on the left side where it says Sprite Inherited. Click that, drag it into this target self. And the uh, flipbook that we want to use is the run animation for our uh, player character, which is this middle one right here. So go ahead and compile and save that. And uh, drag this set flipbook node down into the pair float variable, the same place that all of these nodes have been getting dragged into at the end. Okay, so what is going to happen now is we're going to head over to the buttons, back to our button that we created. So what we're going to want to do over with this button is we're going to want to get player character. So once we have the player character, we want to make sure that that is the 2D side scroller character. So cast to 2D side scroller character. From the 2D side scroller character, what we want to do is we want to call the move right custom event. So what this is going to do is it's going to start that whole move right sequence. The only thing left to do is to uh, add an on event um, unclicked for this. So what we want to do is on release. So to get back here, you click designer, go to the button, click on released. That's going to add the node down here for this. Same exact code. So just, well, same for these two nodes anyway. Control C, Control V, drop those in. And what we want to do is we want to the, do the stop moving right variable function thing that we just created. So that is it for this movement button movement input. So let's go ahead and show you what happens. So what's going to happen is you're going to go ahead and press this button. When you press this button, it's going to go and uh, trigger this. So it's going to cast to the character, get the 2D size for the character, and move right, call that custom event. So if we go to our custom event, what is the custom event going to do? So we've got our move right. Move right is going to set move right to true. It's going to set B is moving right to true, so basically it's going to make the character face to the right, and then it's going to give you your first step of your movement. So if we go back to our updates animation, which is happening every like millisecond, this is always happening, always triggering, always triggering, we're going to go down this long branch of things, and it's going to see B is move right. When it gets to this move right, it's going to go ahead and add the movement input continuously, so every millisecond it's going to keep adding this movement input, and it's going to set the flipbook to run for us as well, so it's going to do the animation handling as well and make this fantastic. Now the issue with this is that it's only going to do these in order, so if you press left and right at the same time, um, basically what it's going to do is that left is always going to be the one that outweighs them, so uh, you won't be able to hit two buttons at the same time. It will uh, basically cause an issue like that, but for the most part it will function exactly as you had intended. Now the only left thing left to do is to create this widget, so we need to go to wherever we created our event begin play thing where we bring up our widgets. So what we need to do is go to event begin play, create HUD widget, yeah, add to viewport, okay. So now what we need to do is we need to create the button widget. So I'll delete this and I'll just do it again. Create widget. So on this widget, after we hit create widget, what we're going to do is select the buttons widget that we had created. Off of this buttons widget, what we're going to do is add to viewport. So actually drag off of the blue node and type in add to viewport. And that will add that widget to our viewport. The only thing left to do is to show our mouse cursor for testing purposes. However, you wouldn't need to do this for a mobile uh, interaction or, or a mobile game simply because, and we need to get the player controller off of that, get player controller and drag that into there because that's dealing with the player controller, set the show mouse cursor to true. So you won't need to do this for a touch game simply because a touch player will be able to press that button down with their finger, they don't need a mouse cursor, but for testing purposes to see if the buttons work we need to show the mouse cursor. So once again if we go ahead and hit play, now there will be two buttons down here, if I hit the button on the right I go to the right, if I hit the button on the left I go to the left. So that does both of my uh, buttons and I clicked off of my screen, but um, anyway, so our buttons are working, our left and right buttons are working, and that is how you would handle a, uh, an input button like that, a movement input. Now for something like these attack inputs, it'd be the same exact thing, instead of input action throw, you need to put in a custom event here, so it'd be a custom event, custom event, and we would call it, I don't know, throw. And so all we would do is drag that custom event into this branch right here, and then trigger a custom event of throw the same exact way we just uh, triggered those buttons on this. Um, on button pressed, cast to the 2D side scroller character, and then call the custom event. And that would call the custom event and do the throw. So very, very simple. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we've got our custom event throw that we added in here. 
So now let's go back to our designer panel on our buttons. So we'll go to the buttons menu, designer. On here, what we're gonna do is add another button. So let's add the button over here. Um, this button, let's just drop it like right here and make that the throw button, sure. What we do is click on that button, scroll down to on pressed. Once we press it, we can just copy paste this code since we already have it, control C, control V, cast it to the 2D side scroller character, get the player character, cast it the character. Next thing we're gonna do is call the custom event called throw. So custom event throw, compile save. And now if we go ahead and hit play and we hit the throw button, he throws a kunai. Super simple, super, super simple. The nice thing about this one is that you don't need to add an on release um, simply because there, there's no like releasing action. There's nothing that needs to repeat. So you can go ahead and just keep it exactly like that and you will be good to go. So that is how you would do any like input buttons, like a pause menu, um, the other attack menus, even a jump where it's just a singular input. Uh, that is how you go ahead and do that as well. Just add the input for jumping just like that. Exact same way, go ahead and add a custom event on jump and then just like that, boom, fantastic. But anyway, guys, this is basically it. This is how you would go ahead and create your touch screen overlay for a mobile game. So you got your left and right buttons. We got a throwing button. You'd add your attack button right here. And then your player will be able to play that with their uh, thumbs on the uh, screen of the mobile device. So anyway, guys, I hope you found the video useful. If you did like this video, make sure to leave a like. Check out some of the other videos in the series. Make sure you're subscribed to stay updated when new parts of the series come out. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you at the next video. Peace.